afternoon. I call to order the Lynchburg Planning Commission meeting for Wednesday, May 10th, 2023. The first order of business is the approval of the April 12th, 2023 minutes. Has everybody had a chance to read and approve or disapprove any additions or corrections? Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The next order of business is the following new business where we will consider the petition of the way LLC for a conditional use permit in a B3 community business district to allow 31 apartments in a mixed use building at 5900 and 5906 Fort Avenue. Hundred and fifty nine oh six Port Avenue. The proposal would exceed the ratio of 50% commercial to 50% residential, which is allowed by right in the B3 district. So the CUP can petition is to allow these additional residential units. The property is currently zoned B3 community business district, and that was established in 1978. The city's future land use map currently recommends a community commercial use for the property. These areas contain retail, personal service, entertainment, and restaurant uses that draw customers from at least several neighborhoods, the entire city or region. They typically contain clusters of businesses, often at major intersections and shopping centers. Residential uses may be established on the upper floors of commercial structures or as transi transitional structures between residential and commercial buildings. The subject properties contain a total of seven tenths of an acre. 5900 Ford Avenue contains a one-story structure constructed in 1955. It's approximately 13,000 square feet in size and was most recently used as a carpet and flooring store. 5906 Ford Avenue is currently vacant. The property is bound by commercial uses to the east and north across Ford Avenue, by Quaker Memorial Church to the west, and residential uses to the south. If the CUP is approved, the existing building at 5900 Fort would be modified to contain approximately 2,800 square feet of commercial space, nine two-story units, and one unit in the basement. A new three-story building would be constructed on the vacant portion, of, which is 5906 Fort, Fort Avenue, and would contain 21 units. The proposed use of the property should have limited impact on the area. The project would contain some commercial space while providing ad additional residential units. The site is located on a corner lot with commercial uses on one side and residential homes on another. The proposed apartments should fit well into the surrounding area. The city's technical review committee reviewed this petition on March 21st. Comments related to the petition have or will be addressed by the petitioner prior to final site plan approval. The planning division recommends approval with the condition outlined in your packet. Who is here to speak on behalf of this petition? Your friendly neighborhood engineer, yes. welcome, <laughs> Amy Seip, um, majority partner of AccuPoint Serving and Design. It's been a while since I've seen you guys, so good to see you again. Um, as Rachel mentioned, uh, this is a, a development that's allowed by right with a 50-50 split. We're just asking for a little um, change in that split. Um, if you're familiar with Mr. Calfee, who is part of this project, he's done quite an extensive amount of redevelopment within the city. So we're looking to take a building that has been, you know, starting to decline um, and repurpose it, which in the city, I think we can all agree that that's something that we look to do as frequently as possible. So the uh, vacant lot that you've seen in the aerial photo would be used as part of the uh, flow and connection with the existing building that would be modified to to be two stories. Um, this is a good transitional piece from residents uh, that you know currently this is kind of a hodgepodge of things along that area so uh, this is a type of residential that is a typically a good transition piece from commercial to uh, traditional neighborhoods in the back so these units will be townhome type so very high end, very well done, um, but you know, still uh, in the in the range that's for this general area. We did meet extensively with the engineering department to discuss parking um, in 
in the way that this is is now, you know, the parking is different than what we would normally do today. So we've we've kind of gotten creative to have some parallel parking and then some on-site parking and loading areas for the residents. Uh, of course, the bike rack, because I think, you know, we will have people that would want to bike in this area. And we've added uh, some green space and buffer. And I think that was on the plan, the revised plan that we sent in. So uh, lots of landscape, very beautified the corner for sure. So happy to answer any technical questions. And then if you have any further questions, Mr. Calfi is here as well that can answer some of those. Thank you. Did you sign in? Yeah, I signed <laughs> Is there anyone here to speak in favor of this petition? Is there anyone to speak in opposition of this petition? Do we have any comments online? No? Okay. Okay, at this point, the public hearing is closed and commissioners, um, I'm sure we'll have some questions. Amy, can you speak more on the landscaping? Sure, there's a required buffer between uh, the mixed use and the residences in the back. And then, of course, uh, because this is a mixed use, we're also trying to help screen it from the adjacent commercial properties. So, um, you know, this is strictly representation right now, but, um, you know, we've, we've done our best to, to add some green space and make it attractive from, um, from a street view perspective. Uh, we do have street trees that will be necessary along the the area that is a significantly wide right away uh, from Ford Avenue. Um, I was shocked when when we first got it that the right away is actually that big. But um, so we'll be adding some trees in the right away. So, um, but it shouldn't interfere with any power lines or things like that. So. So the, the main question is, it's, it's not 50-50 between commercial and residential. What is the actual? ratio proposed because you said 2800 square feet I mean, commercial rough, roughly 70 30 roughly um, so or a the, little bit less the existing building is um about 13,000 square feet um and what is proposed to as commercial within that um is 2800 square feet but you're and also the, adding and then there the are building on the adjacent correct so would the ratio be everything, 2,800 divided by everything, or 2,800 divided by 13,000? Uh, if they were going to, if they were going to do by right, um, yeah. it would it would be half and half. So 50 50, um, meaning either 13 half of the 13,000 existing square feet would be commercial or they could go up a level and it would be 13,000 square feet on the bottom or and 13,000 square feet on the top. I mean, just depending on how you configure the, the building. But you're putting in 31 units. Right, which is why the, the CUP is necessary. Right, so I still don't know what the ratio, proposed ratio is. Um, let me check on the um, proposed square if it's, footage. You know, if it's 95 to 5, that's very different than obviously sure. 65 to 45. Or 65, 30, 35. And, but it's 70 to 30 residential to commercial, right? It's maybe a little more 80, 20. I, I didn't do the exact but numbers. But. Residential is the most and commercial is Correct. the least. And Correct. So if the, um, I mean, if somebody had 49.51, would that have required a, uh, so you've got to be exactly 50-50? Uh, that, that is what the ordinance um, 
requires. Not 1% more or less, huh? We, we <laughs> haven't had any petitions come in cutting it so close. Um, okay, so it's the ordinance is at 50 50, so we're talking 70 30. And these are all rentals, right? None of these are going to be owned by citizens of Lynchburg. These are, these are rentals, is that correct? And so, parking, it's about one one unit it's per park. One per unit. One per unit. And I know you're you're exceeding the by right, but um, what's the plan for? I know you talk about shared parking, but we know there's going to be more than one car per unit overall. I'm, that that's all you're allowed. So I mean, no, that's not going to stop people from having. They're going to be assigned one parking spot. Yes. There will be more than one cars per unit. There's nothing that says to the renters that you can only have one car. I mean, that's typically not in any rental. Right, so people like, find their parking. So I'm asking, sure. where are they going to park when people come in with two or three cars? Well, so the, the shared parking is for, you know, the commercial space during the day. You know, during the day, most people leave. Um, the commercial space can operate however it needs to, 8 to 5, 9 to 5, whatever. Um, but there is on-street parking up and down that whole street as well. Sir. So going to have most of the commercial areas I've seen do not permit after hours parking and they have tow policies on that. Is, well is no because this is the own the owner owns the commercial space as well so. so is he officially going to allow overflow parking from the apartment building into the commercial space parking is so it, it so it's all his question. it's so it's all one so so is that a yes it's not a so it's shared. yeah it's shared okay commercial so commercial use is it mostly in the daytime and Correct. Right. I'm just trying to clear Dave's question. Right. So in, the, yeah. in effect, it would be overflow parking. And that's fine. Do we have a, do we have a <clears throat> ballpark of what that grants? How many parking spots that would provide? I think the total parking spots were already Yes. Right. Yeah. So that's including the commercial. Correct. Oh, including the, including. Yeah, it's that's shared. For it's shared parking. So, so where are they going? So you're saying once that 31, once that 30, well, it's mixed two or 31 is used up. So it's no different if you live in a loft downtown. If you're allotted one space in a oh, loft, oh, I know exactly, you know, and that's why I'm asking you. Have to go it. elsewhere. So there's so, so downtown they have to find parking. I'm asking where are they going to find parking here? Well, there's that's what I'm saying. There's there's public on street parking around on that whole on that whole road. Yeah. Like John Lynch not has on not on public. Ford. You can park on roads. John Lynch. And then further down that access Correct. road. Yeah. Um, so regarding the parking um, in the in that section of the packet, um, I did call out um, that the plan doesn't call f doesn't show additional parking for the commercial commercial portion of the building. Um, but like we just talked about, lots of times during the day, the tenant spots will sit empty um, because they're not going to overlap as much <laughs> with. Um, you know, business hours. Um, our zoning ordinance provides that shared parking can be considered during our site plan review process when our applicant shows that shared parking is feasible and that the number of spaces proposed is adequate to meet the projected parking demand at all hours. Um, so depending on the use that is going into the commercial space, which I don't think they have settled on yet, um, there would be a certain number of spaces provided for that. And if Correct. that is, if their peak use is between nine and five, um, when not everyone works, but a lot of a, a good, good portion of the population is working, um, then we would ensure that they're, they're not competing for the same spots. Um, the existing businesses along this area as well have, I mean, I've frequented some of them, and it's, it's kind of just open parking through there, so. So, I mean, I don't think anyone would like park at the music store, but you know, who knows? They, they might. <laughs> so, um, I understand you don't know what exactly is going in there in the commercial space, but the access would be from the front, the face facing Ford Avenue. Yes. And that long sidewalk goes out to the parking in the front. Um, yeah, kind of where, kind of how it is now. Yeah, and um, so I would hope that whatever goes in there is closed on the weekends because it would be more office type yeah. you know uh real estate off me i Insurance mean that's or, yeah, yeah yeah something low volume that you know it's not a 
it's not a busy smoothie shop that, you know, it's not a tropical smoothie where people are coming in, you know, okay. 18 people at a time or something. So. Yeah. But I'm with you, so like worst case scenario, like we've got 41 people that, you know, it's full and maybe each unit has two people. So you might have 62 cars for 30, not 41, but 31 spots. And so then you've got an overflow of 31 cars on the weekend. And so are they gonna be parking on John Lynch, you know, like in in the <clears throat> in the Quaker Church. Well, I know, think that's with the any. Side, or are they going to be parking on along the front of that little throughway, which you know is it has commercial, you know, the music place is going to be packed on the. I don't, you know, I mean, I I'm just saying, in worst case scenario, there there could be a pretty significant overflow of cars if. If everybody, I, I don't know of an apartment complex that says we're going to come into your apartment and figure out how many cars you own and figure no. out how many cars well, we, you have. We, we you know, discuss parking with every yeah. petition that comes. Oh, but before us, but, I, so. but what I'm saying is like it, that's not something that you is really regulated in that mm -hmm. I mean, spaces for sure. And if and if part of the rental agreement is you have one space, and this is you know I've been in spa places where they give you a map. Here's where you're allowed to park. Mm -hmm. And here's your spot. You know, here most people get a number, and if you are outside of that, then you're either to towed by the the city or county, or uh, the owner themselves. If it's not mm -hmm. so, for example, there's a, a loading area in the back. Um, you know, we've seen that plenty of times. And I see it. People park in the fire lane, mm -hmm. in front of food line. So, you know. Well, and they could go across the way and park in that shopping center. And cross mm -hmm. I think we're just trying to figure out where the you know where the overflow would go but it looks like even in this aerial shot that you know there are people already parking out in front of the thing anyway. yeah all and along that whole area point, it's yeah, I've been over there and to your point it is wide yeah it's super um, wide and that's that was our discussion with the neighborhood streets right neighborhood oh streets. it's like so <clears throat> it's just a question of what the number would be and I think you know it's I mean I hear what you're saying Amy I'm just, I'm just and I, and I, unfortunately, I don't know what you're going to know until actually you get stuff filled and you know kind of how it breaks out. And, if, when, and you have you have people that follow the rules and you have people that don't follow the rules, you know, so. Oh, I don't know anything about those people. <laughs> well, so that, that access road is, I don't know if it has a name, that's a parallel to the. Old yeah. Ford Avenue. It's Old Ford, Ford Avenue. Avenue. Yeah. Yeah. Real original. I mean, Real original. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> There's I know, new and old. So. I know one side has parking spots, but the other yeah. side almost could actually have formal parking spots yeah. as well if it was needed down the road. Yeah, yeah, and we did some historical photo looking over the years, and it seems to always have been that people have parked along. Yeah. Um, these will, you know, where we have shown would be essentially public improvements, we're going to have to build those to city standards. So they would be public improvements because it is in the city right of way. So it, it won't just be like we're putting down some asphalt and people are going to park there on gravel. So um, it, it is making improvement to city property. So, um, but I, I think that, you know, that whole area, mm -hmm. people are already doing it. So the, um, one of the buildings I see, are they all one bedroom, one bath? I see like I one, one, one building, building looks like most of all of them are one bedroom, one bath, the newer building. No, wait, hold on. I'm confused. Oh, I'm looking upstairs. Yeah, I was going to say okay. some of them are. All right. So we've got two, there's several that are two bedroom, two bath, and then several, then some that are one bedroom, one bath. So it's a mixture. And then some that are three bedrooms. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it could be three people living there. So I, I had a question, Rachel. And when I look at the parking, like if you look at an overview satellite overview, I mean, there's cars parked on the right of way all the way the entire length of that road. So I don't really think parking is is an issue for this. My question is like, what does it take? What makes that 50-50? What is B5? What would that be? Is there a split for that? Commercial um, on the bottom floor and then residential on the top. It could be higher, could be a larger mix. I just look at this property, I just think it's an interesting, interesting thing we have. We have this big shopping center across the street that's zoned the same, and then we have this area that seems really kind of ripe for 
redevelopment. You know, and and we've been trying to change things, you know, so that it fosters better development in for the future. So that's why I was asking what kind of zoning would make that difference. Um, so B3, I mean, B3 and B5 are both limited to 50 50, 50, 50, 50 commercial residential, unless you go through a conditional use permit process okay. to either um, adjust that to, yep, okay. to, to do right. either standalone apartments. Um, you can do a CUP for standalone apartments mm -hmm. in B3. You can do a CUP for additional residential in B3. Okay. So um, to go back to the question of what is the ratio, um, because I do believe they will be um, doing an addition. Um, is, is that right? The, yeah. The, the existing building will get bumped, the yeah. roof line will be bumped up a bit yeah. to um, ac accommodate for that um, second floor. Um, so I think I got, and don't hold me to this because these numbers are really strong, really, really small. Um, <laughs> so there's the 28, <laughs> yeah, I should have printed it bigger. Um, the 2,800 commercial, about 6,800 residential. So I get 41% commercial on the existing and there's building. a basement also that has the same amount of Oh, the commercial, yeah. actually, yes, the commercial has, there's commercial in the basement as well. Um, but so regardless of the ratio, um, mm -hmm. If you're exceeding right. the ratio, you need the CUP. Mm -hmm. You can also do standalone apartments in this district with a conditional use permit. Um, and there doesn't have to be any conditional or commercial component um, if you go that route. So it's the same process for either way you look at it. But here we're we. Not, we're not moving crazy away from this. So if it's right. about 5,800 to 6,800, maybe. You said it was 4,800 commercial, but if you add the basement. Might be so another thousand. I mean, ten. No, that much. Probably, I mean, I would think pretty close. Yeah, yeah I would actually. It would be more with the commer commercial in the mm -hmm. basement because I wasn't counting that. This schematic is a little hard to work with <laughs> for me, not being an architect, because uh, the second half rec represents, I think, levels two yeah. and three. Um, yeah. So, mm -hmm. but in, in my opinion, it's still reasonable mm -hmm. and a good transition. I mean, it, it's. I thought it was pretty harsh to begin with, the, the types of commercial that were there. You know, carpet store, which is yeah. pretty heavy, a uh, pretty heavy use. Um, and of course, it's gonna significant, significantly clean up that, that corner, which is, the cleanup has already actually started, so, um, just because it needed to be clean. Not it was. Only, not only from the site, but also, to your point, from an industrial standpoint. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, it just seems like that's been a, what are we going to do with that part of the with that part of the world for an awfully long time? Right. For a long time, particularly when I was younger and more curious, I would drive by and see. It was like going to the zoo to see what was going to go up in there this week. I right. mean, it was just ridiculous. That that aside, just out of curiosity, I'm fascinated with this commercial space. And that's not the way it goes. We really say something that could be taken wrong, but it just seems like an awfully small amount of space. It'd be, for something like this, I'm just trying to figure out how it fits in. My first thought was so, when I looked at it was there was going to be things that were going to help out. Office buildings certainly make sense. Yeah, office. I mean it wouldn't be retail. No, 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 no. It's, it, it's more enough. more office, like a, a individual who say, say you're just a say you're an independent real estate agent okay. and you need a common space to, you know, work during the day and write contracts or, um, you know, an insurance person that is just a, you know, a smaller. Um, almost like co-working space but you know limited clearly in size but um, I think the intent was to as closely adhere as we could to what is by right which still needs a commercial component um, to keep it with that right. intent of what it is it, it's just at some point it has to you know work to take on a project like this sure. too. And I, so. I guess you know part of the secondary part of my situation is okay you're essentially extending the neighborhood. This is this something that makes sense for the neighborhood? Sure. And to that kind of a, you know, a co-work situation, particularly in a, a remote work as we are now, it certainly makes sense. So sure. I, I think that that helps me a lot to yeah. understand that, that. Yeah, you you wouldn't want to bring in something that was people constantly going in and going out. It's more of a professional type, 
you know, maybe it's open to someone who lives there and wants to rent a space or something, you know, so um, it, it'll definitely be, be limited on what it's made available to. Theoretically, that sort of approach, going back to the parking issue, certainly supports the parking because you can make a case that the same person that lived upstairs is the same person that works downstairs. Well, we, I mean, we've, we have that situation in Windhurst, you know, in Cornerstone. There, I, I know several professionals who, who actually chose to do that, put their, their office downstairs and it was convenient for them to buy the apartment upstairs or, you know, maybe they live at the lake during the weekend and come in town during the week. So I think, I think more kind of unique situations like that are starting to come about because of what we've all you know gone through in the past few years so people are starting to look at options for that so well that makes sense to me just curiously the, the obviously it's shared parking but um you, this is not an assigned parking situation is it i i think it i think it i mean we can't assign t technically the ones in the city right-of-way are city improvements and made available but i i think you would probably say you have one space and maybe it's a permit or because you yeah. would have to be able to differentiate right. who could park there or not so whether it's assigned or some kind of placard or sticker there would need to be something yeah i was just it's more of a owner issue but yeah yeah i like that it's reusing space that has just been sitting here and it does have the best view i think in town it has a like fantastic it's a pretty view. incredible i mean that whole strip is just i mean if you if you get on one of the top floors up mm -hmm. there right. talk about a view would be nice mm -hmm. that maybe it will actually also help cast a vision across the street that's what that's what i'd I so. like to see is that you know more redevelopment in that area i think would be really healthy for the community well you know when the fire was there a few years ago it, it just kind of made it a weird thing and nobody like what do we do with it now it was even more weird so so i think it you know as with several of mr calfee's other areas and projects it's, it's kind of given that umph to maybe other people will go well i can go here because i wasn't the first one so yeah, I, I drive this huge improvement oh I'm, yeah I'm a, I'm a big fan of it and also I like the fact with old fort you're not creating a new egress onto fort it's got that nice access and even has a crossover through the median for left-hand turns yes. which will be nice yes so I think it can't help but make things better I would just add just as a, as a simple matter of policy not speaking one way or the other for the project or against it if we're gonna approve 70 30 ratios then we better be prepared to approve them in other places around town as well. I think that's the advantage of the CUP is that gives us the situation to, sit, to say, because while in this situation to me it makes sense, if we ran a, a, a more, um, I mean, I'll just be cr uh, blunt, if it were in a more neighborhood intensive area, sure. I'd really question, you know, that, that kind of situation at all. I mean, of course, in that situation, you wouldn't have a B3 either. So, you know, so I think that's the advantage of a CUP is it gives you the flexibility to say, in this special case, you know, is this an exception that makes sense? And I think if it gets to be a point where we do, we are in a situation where we're trying to make those kinds of, of major decisions and we'll do like we did either the meeting, last meeting or the meeting before, where we, we changed the ordinance because we were making so many exceptions that it just it wasn't it wasn't relevant anymore. That would that would be my thought. Well, and with the CUP, the underlying zoning still stays. Right. Uh, right. So it's it's a, you know, and we've had that discussion but, before of rezoning versus CUP. So you're right, though, Chuck. And what what's our threshold too? Yeah. If this had been 90-10, would we have said no? I agree. And if it had been other parts of town, would we do the same? Yeah. Thing? And it, that 50-50 is such a sticking point. It seems like 60-40 weighed either way gives a lot more flexibility because who? It's not that big of a difference. Right. Who's gonna ever yeah. Be but 50 -50. but again, 50 right. 51 49 We've got to go through this every time. Yeah. There ought to be a little bit more leeway. I think. Two points is a big deal. Yeah. Um, Twenty points is fairly significant. Yeah. I think, I think this were a comprehensive plan. Like, as we move forward, this needs to be re rethought. I mean, if we look at what happened on Bedford Avenue, where the schools along Rivermont, you know, we're we are doing things like this um, that are rather intensive in places they haven't been. So, 
I, I, I'm supportive of this and, and other, other things like this in general, but I also think, and this, Dave has mentioned this several times, that this is where we need to go back and look and say, what, what is development like today? It wasn't like this 20 years ago. And so how do we then change plans to that? I don't think it, it doesn't relate in my mind to this, but it is something we need to think about. I definitely um, hear what Commissioner uh, Gammon is saying that um, you know you you may feel like you're setting a precedent, but just as a reminder, through the public hearing process, you get to judge each uh, uh, each mm -hmm. petition on its own merits, sure. right. and um, you get to look at the context of each property, um, and in some cases it might be appropriate, in some cases it's not. Right. Yeah, if we'd had 20 neighbors come by against this, right, that'd we'd be, be different. A lot of different conversation. Yeah. I think a lot of these things come up, yeah. and not to keep arguing, but yeah, a lot of folks just don't know. Uh, there, have you, has notices been sent out about this to the neighbors and said what the date the hearing was? Yeah, the that? signs were put. I mean, we followed all yeah. the typical protocols. So, yeah. yeah, I'm arguing just for a trend that uh, is going on uh, more than so the specific point of this development. So. Now, you know, I would say business component of it I mean in some of the this one as well as the one that we listen to for Bedford Avenue I mean it, it, the businesses are not haven't been doing well like on in this area I mean look at the shopping center I mean it, it, the businesses are leaving or, or they can't sustain themselves and so so it looks the way it looks because it's been sitting empty and nobody's there and so you know what Mr. Calfe is proposing, I mean, he, he's, he's going to beautify the area. He's going to make it, I know his buildings are going to be top notch and look good and, and, and attractive. And it's going to bring in a whole new type of person there. You know, might maybe a younger vibe that might start shopping across the street or, you know, and that, I mean, it could be, it could be the beginning of revitalizing this whole area, which I know how passionate he is about that and, and seeing what he's doing on Bedford Avenue with trying to get, you know, street lights in there and really, you know, turning that place around. And so I, you know, I, I applaud the, the vision and I respect what you, you're saying as well. But I do think that in this specific situation, um, I, you know, I'm not seeing that as being, you know, I, I feel like this is a good thing for the property. It may be fine. And if it had been a co-op or townhouses for purchase mm -hmm. or some houses, I think it would be a different matter. The problem is right now the city's facing 60 to 70 percent rental occupancy. Most of that is in two wards of the city. This is creating huge congestion problems, traffic problems, crime problems. So the fact that we're looking at putting more rentals in it may be okay to look at that and say, well, it's just one more. Well, it's just one more. Well, it's just one more. <coughs> it, if it were ownership, put in some townhouses that somebody can buy. You know, ownership creates a stake in the community. That's what I'm saying. Rental does not. And we've got a huge, and I didn't come here to argue this point tonight. It's just heading in that direction. The city has a massive rental ratio right now. And most of that is in very limited parts of the city. And we really probably need to think about changing that rather than furthering that. But also new development, which is seems to be. Yeah. I mean, this is this is um, turning this space into something actually usable. It is new. Yeah, it is new. Well, I'd make a motion that, that um, we approve this as it's written. I like the project, and like I said, I think it does bring up more discussion. I know we're working on the comprehensive plan this year. But I make a motion that we support this one as it's written. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Motion carries. Thank you, Thank you for addressing our concerns. Yeah. Okay. The next order of business is the consideration of naming a street within a new subdivision located off of Bell Terre Drive as Grove Hill Terrace. Thank you, members of the Planning Commission. DBI Capital Group is petitioning to name a new street as Grove Hill Terrace. The street will be located in the Grove.
Road Hill Subdivision, located off of Beltaire Drive at what is currently 1001 Beltaire Drive. The Technical Review Committee reviewed the petition on May 2nd and had no comments of concern. The name is brought before you for comment. So wait, oh, it's oh, Grove Hill Terrace. Yeah, no, I have no problem with the uh, with the, the naming. So basically, it had been a singular address, yeah. and they're trying to yeah. So it's, yeah, that's it's what, one lot into right. sixty one now. Yeah, yeah. We don't vote on this, do we? Not anymore. It doesn't right? require a recommendation. It's just, just presented for comment. If you yeah. thought the name was too right. similar to another name or something like that, you could bring it up. But mm -hmm. any further discussion? I don't think so. Okay. No. Um, so we have a meeting coming up May. What is that? May 24th, do we have something on the... I don't think you'll have any items for that, but we'll, Anna will send out a okay. meeting cancellation to confirm. All right. Can I just make one comment? Can, can we get an accurate proposed ratio when this goes to council? Sure, yep. That's already in my notes. Because it's <laughs> to, looking like it's a lot more extreme To verify than what we with... Thought. So that was for the existing building. Uh, if, you're ac if you're factoring in the new apartment it would be lower and i i don't i hope i wasn't being misleading on that 80 20. 80 20. Yeah, so the existing building is 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 a much closer ratio because the apartments on the existing most of them are 300 square feet and 400 right. and then there are some on the lower level but it's the new building that switches the ratio because there's no commercial in that yes i will verify with the architect so that it's correct in the packet yeah process begin? That's a good question. Um, so we have been um, working with the consultant so far to, uh, they call it a diagnostic basically to see where we are. Um, we've, you know, been coordinating with various departments um, to kind of get a baseline of where they are at and, you know, what they're hoping to see in the comp plan. Um, so we have the diagnostic that's being reviewed by staff right now. Um, once that is complete, We'll be looking to, I believe you're doing a joint kickoff meeting with the EDA at some point. Um, so that is probably going to be July-ish, um, but we will send out um, emails to figure out what the best day is, because I know we're getting into vacation territory. And so also um, some required um, coursework for some of us. Junior uh, yes. commissioners, <laughs> 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 which would be very hands. helpful as we go through this. I'm looking forward to having that um, opportunity. Great. And I don't know, sometimes it seems like summers are a bit slow agenda-wise, yeah, yeah. so our regular meeting times might be available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll have to coordinate with the EDA yeah. and see if I know that it's not works convenient for, for some mm -hmm. consultants. And but. just as a point of like. Um, the, the ordinance, if, if you have two separate addresses, but this one petition, you know, with this one project, mm -hmm. does the project, is it treated as, as both parcels, a combination of both? It's not, you know what I mean? Like the rule doesn't pertain to one parcel being 50-50 and another parcel being 50-50. It's, it's the project as a whole, even though it's on two separate parcels? Yes, so it's okay. because it was Just all presented sure. as, as one petition. Um, it's treated in that right. umbrella. So yeah. If you just wanted to put up a, a separate apartment building, that would not be allowed by rule. It would be the same process. It would be. It would C still be a CUP, still be a but CUP. it would be like a 100 percent yeah. residential I mean, if you, as opposed well, to 50 mm -hmm. So I, this is something I talked to Tom about. This is. We have not adjourned. We have not adjourned, and I think we're just talking. Maybe we're just kind of clarifying the, the ordinance. Is that okay well, I, to do, like oh, without yeah. everybody? Close the session and have a discussion. And they left. We so didn't adjourn. Yeah, they. Yeah, they we're not. We're still open. Yeah. 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 This is okay. just discussion. And it's it's, it's all recorded. <laughs> so okay. my my question, I had asked Tom about this, and I think this would be really helpful. So we actually have seen plenty of petitions that are very similar to this mm -hmm. in residential areas or like on Bedford Avenue. Mm -hmm. And, and the ratios were not there. 
And, and one of the things I wanted, what I'd like to do is I'd like to be able to look back on my stuff. Like I wanted to look back at that Bedford Avenue petition and mm -hmm. it's not on our, in our folder. And so I asked him about that, like, is there a way we can start getting that stuff, keeping that stuff on our folder for a few months so that we can actually access it and then go back quickly instead of going through the city website and, you know, going mm -hmm. through e-track it or whatever it is that, that we have to do. Yeah. And because that would be helpful because I think that this yep. is very similar. I mean, I forget how many apartments there were on Bedford Avenue, but it was a significant number on top of 4,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. So um, sure, and we, we were could, all happy about that. We could just create like an archive folder in the Dropbox yeah. yeah. and maybe keep like the last six months of petitions. I think that would be really good. Um, all the petitions are always available on the Planning Commission website. That's a quick, easy way to access the packets rather mm -hmm. than going to e-track it. Um, and if there's something specific you are looking for ahead of a meeting, we, you know, just let us know. We can always send that to you directly. Um, but yeah, if it's helpful to keep a, you know, a certain number of past petitions. As long as we don't hit the Dropbox, uh, you know, Max. size limitation. I'm going to go to the city budget and add an align for <laughs> Dropbox for us. I mean, that, I think that would be helpful for all of us yeah. if if we are looking at it, you know, with enough time, right. you know, that right. we could actually request, you know, hey, can you send can you send that that approval that I can't remember when it was, but mm -hmm. it was you know last year. Can you find Something it, and send similar. it to all of us right. so we can review it? And sure. I didn't even think of this one until. We got in and saw Mr. Calfee, Darryl, and then yeah. I thought about that as like, hey, we You're actually like, saw oh, something yeah. very similar, Same guy. and it should be, uh -huh. we, we should And in the it. end, there's no guarantee that that commercial space will be filled. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, we've and I've seen, seen it. Does it have to be filled? No, no but we've seen developers, be, yeah, yeah. I've seen, I, I'm, I am no way saying this is happening today, right. but near where I live, this was done by a petitioner as a runaround, and they had no intention of filling the develop, right. the commercial right. space. That's, and they so and they had it completely planned out, and they were right. going to make a ton of money leaving that space empty. Right, and I think so. I think track. That's why I said if you look, I think so, track records speak mm -hmm. speak a lot more than what an apartment I mean, developer it truly is does. Twenty, right? Twenty percent could just be left empty. It, that's true. Right. Right off, that's exactly right. why it's done. It's the seventy thirty eighty twenty is designed. Could. to get the apartments in there because mm -hmm. it has to be mixed use and then whether they fill it or not makes no difference right? that should be then addressed in the comprehensive plan mm -hmm. because i think one of the things that we have is we we develop these programs to allow these kind of developments and then we do see that people take advantage of them. but there are people and there's changes in the way people are building and living that are actually promoting not to leave those empty sure. i mean 5600 square feet is a lot of empty space but, but that's a lot of, of wasted space at some point that percentage it it has to be it yeah. has to be filled to be profitable right for the owner right. right and i don't know what that percentage is right but the other issue is i had exactly i had your comment but i got there a different way i was more worried about the 50 50 because at that point you're talking about something that's going to create a lot of extra traffic which is going to exacerbate all the stuff yeah. that we talk you can't have a restaurant it's, it's bad yeah. on ford avenue i yeah. will tell you yeah so I, mean, I, the fact I would, that this is off the i mean I, i'm not just, trying to rehash i'm simply saying you're exactly for, right. something that we need to look at down the that's road what i'm talking to about. see yes, for just for public meeting um considerations i don't think there's any issue with planning commission speaking generally about the ordinance and the comp plan and things like that but i would just suggest not um discussing the petition since we've already mm -hmm. voted and right. closed right. um that, well, that public I hearing ask you a question Rachel. sure so why is the rule 50 50 right. if is no. it i mean okay so it's a, already a commercial space they want to make it 50 percent residential and or some percent resident they want to add residential if if they added 40 percent residential or one percent residential it could be fewer it could be it, lower okay it doesn't so have to have be 60 sorry. or 70 or 80 percent commercial it just can't it, it can be up to 50 50. Okay. sorry yes okay yeah so no, I didn't know that. all right but the so thought the thought was to keep at least half commercial because that is the purpose of the district and if you want to go over okay. then you're going through a conditional then, use permit process where the so, commission can so if it's 60, 51 percent business mm -hmm. we don't have to vote on it right correct right so as long as it meets the other mm -hmm. got it. the other ordinance here's another issue is you know when you look at square footage and what what we've seen this happen all over the country you know that you have smaller areas that are developed and then they're taller. 50-50 mm -hmm. makes no sense 
in, in a lot of ways. And I think it's almost like this policy was written for 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And we need, this is what I'm saying, I, I think that this is the kind of development that's going on and there are, there are uses going into these things regularly. Mm -hmm. We're seeing businesses move into these kind of spaces. So I think that that's why we need to go back yeah. and revisit well, these policies, because it doesn't make sense. I, I wouldn't buy a piece of land to do 50-50. The part that hurts my brain more than anything in this whole process is back to your point about precedent. I mean, unless you're a part of this process or you know where to find something within the document domains of the city, and good for you, um, <laughs> if you do, you know, I, I just, I really wish there was a more um, efficient way for us to call up or conjure past precedent so that we know how to make better decisions for the future. And unless you're in tune with thinking about that, you're, is it, it's not working in the right direction. Right. Yeah. Well, I think, too, you know, we're, we're, we're at the end of a, of a comprehensive plan period. We were lucky in that they had just come up with a, new, with a new plan. But now, not only are you hitting the end of that, you know, we're getting ready to start another planning period, so a lot of things have changed. I would say that over the last five years, the type of projects and the type of work environment, the type of living environment, has changed pretty dramatically, it's and I think it's yeah. It's going to guess where it's going. Yeah, and it's just it's yeah, and it's just I mean, it, in my mind, just a really quick transition, um, and I think, you know, I, I mean, you know, really honestly, ten years ago, if somebody had come in and said I want to work remotely, I mean, yeah. I, rem I remember dreaming <laughs> about that. Now. You know, the, I've read an article today that said that companies are screaming for people to come back and people are going, you're not going to have me work for you. They're losing their minds. But, uh, yeah, I'm not yeah. coming back. Yeah. But can you imagine? But I just think, you know, and, and the idea of mixed use is new to me. I, I just think that we're, we're, in a, we're in a period that calls us to be innovative, and this is an innovative situation. And I think we have to step out of where we are. And I'm not saying it as a criticism, I'm just saying... I just, in my life, this is unprecedented. I love the aspect of innovation. I just don't know the direction of the future yeah. of Lynchburg as a city because I do drive down the same roads you do, and I, I look at our city and I'm like, what's going on? But I think there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of dead space, for lack of a better phrase. Yeah, for agreed. lack of a better phrase. I absolutely agree. But there's not a lack of traffic. There's, yeah. I mean, I've lived here for over 30 years. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking about this. I was driving here when I, when I moved here over 30 years ago. It's a pretty quiet town. You know, but every now and again you hear about a murder or something or a cop in trouble or somebody did something in the county, a robbery, but rarely. Now it's every day. We, get, we counted the other day sirens going by seven times in one day. That's a change just in the last five, six years. Watching the traffic on Ford Avenue and Timberlake as all these gigantic apartment buildings are going up up there, it is crammed on there. Head out to Forest, you know, 221 out there, it is packed to the hilt. We're not designed, the city's not designed to handle all the rental that we're putting in this city. Well, it just the, isn't. There's nowhere to put it. Too, is when we first started, I'll never forget, I had a similar kinds of conversations, similar kinds of thoughts. And I think Lynchburg is growing. And Tom Martin gave one of the best, for me, one of the best conversations I've ever heard, and I can't quote him exactly, but the high points were, when this, when we annexed the last land in 1978, they were they specking big lots. They were building Ward's Road. People were driving places. Nobody walked anywhere. And he, you know, one of the things that the planning department has, has really beaten in my head is we've got to figure out alternate ways to handle that traffic. Um, the other problem, however, is because of what we get left with in the sense that we can't grow the city, we're in a situation where we're going to have to add density because people are going to go somewhere. Not necessarily. Well, that's a 50 year old concept, though, too. Packing people into the city is the solution. Creating mass transit is the solution to the problems that creates. Well, but, but the problem. It's the designed problem. to mitigate urban sprawl, is what it is. But there's nothing wrong. The same people who are moving into these high rise apartments are the same people that could move into the counties. And they would still use city businesses and still use city services and they would still be paying city taxes through the purchases and sales that they do. And we do have a high city tax here with uh, services and entertainment taxes. You know, so those taxes are still getting paid. 
Right. You know, it's just an old philosophy that's still lingering around. Well, I think that the problem, though, is, is as we sit here and look at what we've, we've got to deal with, um, you know, our primary focus is to look at zoning and what makes sense. And to the point that Dave made earlier, to make sure that we don't create problems down the road where we, you know, have to move because our neighbors hate us so much and, well, and we're so disappointed. We yeah, and and I the think crime you, stats, the crime stats on the city's website are three or four years old. If you talk to the local cops, because yeah. my wife heads up the neighborhood watch, what they show you is a different story. Oh, Crime uh, is up two, three, four hundred percent. And I would say that I would say that the influx into, I mean, the population change in Lynchburg has been, you know, a huge part of that. It and, is a massive, and it's a huge fabric yeah. of what's going on. So anyway, the, the, we can talk about all this stuff, and I think it makes sense for those kind of ideas to come forward because I struggle with the idea of, you know, somewhere down the road. The entire footprint of Lynchburg is, you know, under apartments. Yeah, right. And I, you know, We're that, nobody wants that to inch do. Of space with apartment buildings. This is the lead-off conversation with the consultants for yeah. the new comprehensive yeah. plan. Yeah. This is what we're interested in, where the city's going. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I think <laughs> it a, sounds for, like for me, a part of it is, the, I mean, like we have create this plan that's great, but like there, there's got to be tools and instruments at our at our fingertips that allow us to more easily make decisions based on that plan. Otherwise, you're thumbing through hundreds of pages of documents. You're recalling information that may or may not be accurate. And there's got to be some technological support for a comprehensive plan that can drive us further faster. You know what I came on? And I think this interesting will see the same thing happen, and Dave would probably attest to this and you would, is that decisions were easier mm -hmm. when I first came on because the plan had been written and things were fitting in it really well. So what we're seeing is we're seeing the end of a right. plan and a change in demographics and change in the way the city's doing. You know, hopefully we'll yeah. be able to frame it up more differently. Do, right. We can either continue doing what we're doing right. or change the philosophy. And if we're using philosophies that are 50 years old to move into the future, we're just going to see the problems compound. And I'm afraid that's what we're going to see. I don't disagree. Well, it sounds like everyone has a lot of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> it is a good segue into the comp plan, so I, we're, I we're excited to engage all of you and the public um, on that endeavor. So I'm going to make a motion that we adjourn. Second. All right. All, all right. in favor. Great. Aye. Aye. Aye.